Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of In The Room With Trafalgar Law. My name is Scarface King. Joining me today, my co-host, Mr. Teacups. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, back for your weekly installment of In The Room With Trafalgar Law. Definitely weekly, definitely nothing else. Now, today we'd like to talk about things that games do right. Ma- mainly features we're talking about here. Uh, the reason we want to talk about this is because we feel like we're maybe just a little bit negative on this channel. A bit more just than a bit. maybe a shit on certain games in particular. I'm not going to name any names. Um, <laughs> I wonder what. <laughs> but maybe, you know, maybe certain games do things well. And maybe we should celebrate these and say, well, if this guy does this thing well, maybe someone else could benefit from it. A certain other game could benefit from a feature or whatever the fuck. Anyway. Anyway. We're going to jump in, because this is definitely our first recording. Yes, yeah, definitely our first recording. Um, our second take. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start off with Dokkan. We've got exclusive banners. Um, it, it's, it's pretty cool that the banner system in Dokkan, especially with Dokkan Fest, it drops big boy banner. And it lasts a considerable amount of time, you know. And the thing is, you know, for me, a busy man... <laughs> busy playing all these anime games it's convenient because i can pull whenever i feel like it gives me time to farm the stones it gives me time to you know i don't have to constantly have my finger on the pulse of the subreddit and know every single little thing it's like oh cool there's a banner up i can pull and it'll be there for long enough that it's just kind of chill i think i think you'd agree that maybe certain other games could benefit from this uh, yes, I think most games could definitely benefit from this because otherwise, you know, Sugo Fest, whatever Fest in any game, it just comes and goes really too quick. Then really you got like two weeks in between where you've not got much going on at all. I appreciate these Dokkan Fest and that because while you're actually playing a game, it just encourages you to pull, encourages you to say farm, get some gems and pull on the banner. Like you don't have to spunk your load straight away. You could take your time, see what people are pulling, see what the rates are like and see if you're actually going to go in and on, go in on the banner or not. Yeah, and another thing is the fact that on certain other games, won't name names, there's no reason to pull outside certain events. None. Whatsoever. Recently, One Piece has been getting better at that because they've added the uh, the, the secret characters that are actually good. Which we always said that. It would be nice if the secret characters actually fucking did something. Now they're actually good, so there's a reason to pull outside of the Sugo Fest. But on Dokkan, it's like, you've got the LR banners, you've got the like... At the moment, you've got the Califla and Kale banner, and you just you just get so many goodies. You can pull whatever you want. Yes, and I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Should we move on to the next point? Yes. All right, we're going with Dokkan again, because we're doing all the Dokkan points. <laughs> we're talking about banner offers are very common in that game. Buy one, get one free, free for four, whatever. If you play Dokkan, you know it. These guys just love to do something good, and... You just appreciate it. As a player of these gadget games for such a long ass time, you appreciate when you get something for free. I, I do. You know, the GSSR banner, stuff like that. Free pool banners. Recently on like Global, and I believe uh, Japan did it with like the uh, the Gohan banner, the LR Gohan banner, where if you did a bunch of more pools, you got a bunch of tickets, and you got a chance to you know, get an LR Gohan. Sadly, I didn't get one, but a lot of people did. Games like that that really you know, offer something out there, I appreciate because... A lot of them really struggle with their offers and that. Like One Piece, oh god, I'm already starting to shit on One Piece. But One Piece really only has one system for that. It's free my pools, you get a red poster, there's no guarantee of what it's going to be. And recently with the third anniversary, you have obviously the guarantee like gear for the signs you the day after. That's really what they offer. Dokkan love to go in. They absolutely love to go in. And oh boy, we love it because we always go in when they got a good deal. Like obviously with the Super Saiyan 4 banners, both times we both went in hard. And actually, <laughs> we, we went in on the global one twice, so you know how good their offers are. And I, I can, you know, I think Robert can agree. We do appreciate a good buy one, get one free. Yeah, the, the banner offers are just insane on Dokkan. I think I think that's a generally agreed point. Other games do offer it. I mean, when our collection started, we got the discount summons. Uh, we, we've had sort of offers on One Piece here and there. Uh, with the, like, guaranteed red post, the guaranteed raid up unit, whatever. And I think also... You, can look to naruto where they seem to have an offer on pretty much every single banner an offer of some description some kind of step up or whatever some of those significantly better than others some of those are just yes. awful just Definitely straight that. up awful. 
what was it uh Madara Chiho one you had to do like eight steps and it was over like four or five hundred stones I ain't about that life yeah that's just that's just too much for me you know and you know this leads on to our next point um LRs in Dokkan when I go to pool I'm not just thinking I want this banner exclusive unit there's there's secrets there's secrets hidden in the banners you know and it's like ooh, I could get a secret goodie and you know but it, they didn't start this, I don't think. I think One Piece started this with the secret, you know, the log characters and stuff. Yeah. And it really feels special to pull one of those characters, you know. When I pulled, like, Log Ace and stuff, I was like, yes, this is so fucking cool. Even though those units in general aren't particularly good, it was something that... It's like a nice little touch, you know. It's something nice that you can pull. It's like a little, it's a little Easter egg in the banner <laughs> sort of thing, you know. Dokkan does it a lot better because your little Easter egg is a fucking LR Gohan or Margin Vegeta or Broly or Goku Black and Zamasu or whatever. Basically, god tier units, you know. And so, I'm, um, you know, I, 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 I'll, something... I, I'll say that's pretty good. It's pretty, it's pretty good. good. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you've also got the free to play LRs. But you also have the free to play LRs. Yes, yes, you do. Goku. Which is fantastic, can I just say? I'm never gonna do it. Yeah, so I'm sure. I'm sure you know many people will, and I'll be happy with because he's a massive beat stick. He's an actually good free to play unit. We're gonna talk about another game that handles free to play units quite well later. Um, but yeah, I think the thing is with Dokan, they just they really like the addition of LRs, and they were like, let's just go crazy. Let's add your freezer. Let's add your uh, Captain Ginyu, even though I don't, I don't know how many people have actually finished him. Let's add your uh, friend point androids and stuff. Adding these little, these little things into the game that are actually genuinely something interesting and worth grinding to me. Pretty cool. Yeah, I do agree. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna move on to the next point where we can talk about sales in the games. And obviously, we're talking about Dokkan, so it's gonna be a Dokkan sale. If you've been around Dokkan, Dokkan for a little while. Their sales are crazy. Like recently on Global, they had 50 gems for four pound. Absolutely ridiculous. And whenever there's like a fest on, Robert likes to put it bluntly every time. Every time it's a Tuesday on Dokkan, they like to do a sale. And they're always something that sparks my attention. You know, like a lot of other games out there, like One Piece and that, their sales are dreadful. You know, it's like they, they, they had the idea of a sale, then putting up the price. Bleach, not so much. Like Bleach, your sales are really crap as well. But Dokkan absolutely crazy something that actually gets my money like this thing as well like i've had decent luck on dokkan also as well on dokkan it's very free to play friendly you get a lot of gems through the free play mechanics in that game but it's actually got money out of me because they've actually had gem sales where i've gone you know what this is a good deal i don't mind spending this money i don't regret it well i've other gacha games out there i'm like i'm not even going to put any money into this game because this is ridiculous i like, put in like 40 50 pound into like one multiple where you're pretty much guaranteed to get shit it's not worth my time so good sell Dokkan, I love it. Yeah, the thing is, I think Dokkan handles it quite well, and even better now with the uh, the poster you can get, where you can get a unit from the uh, the Baba store, the the new Pilaf Trove thing, the uh, the blue stone stuff like that. They've added so many things in that incentivize purchases as well as just the sale. And you know, Bleach has done that to an extent. Even Naruto has done that to an extent. One Piece is slacking in that regard. And, you know, we don't. We said we weren't just going to try and shit on games here. <laughs> but that's one thing I've got to say. One Piece rarely has a good sale, rarely incentivizes purchasing, purchasing gems. And, but when it does, it's really Terrible. not great. But anyway, let's talk about. Let's keep it positive. Let's keep it positive. Let's, yeah. let's carry on with Dokkan. Raids or. Uh, impacts or whatever the fuck they're called on Dokkan. What are they called on Dokkan? It's strikes? Super Strikes. No, Super Strikes ain't it, though. I'm talking about Dokkan events. There we go. We got there. There you go. Dokkan events are on every day. They're color-coded. And they're also... So it's like uh, Monday through Friday, you get all the colors. And then on the weekends, you get the villains on one day and the heroes on the other. They all come round and they all fly through. And I know some of the other events are needed for medals for certain characters and whatever. And they're maybe not as common. But the fact that I, on any day, if I have Super Saiyan 4 Goku and I'm like, oh, I need like seven more medals. I only have to wait until Red Day or Hero Day and I get those medals. Whereas 
on certain other games. <laughs> oh fuck, here we go. Well, no, let's let's not shit on One Piece. Let's shit on Bleach instead because it's unfair, right? Yeah. On Bleach, if you want to limit break one of your characters to level 150, or you want to finish their soul tree and get all their traits or whatever, you need certain raid copies for certain characters. And on Global, it's a little bit more reasonable because they're the 24 hour raids. On Japan, it's kind of shitty. You have to wait for the raids to come around for quite a while. I know they've done multiple things to help ease this. You have to wait around for quite a while and then once it does come, you only have set periods of time throughout the day where they'll actually be available. And, you know, once you've got all the ones you've got from the point system, you know, you get five copies a month, I think, from the point system. After that, it's all RNG, buddy. You could just get screwed in the arse and there's nothing you could do about it because you only got a certain period of time. Once that time's up, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I've already missed Ichigo, so I'm going to be waiting a while for that to come back around. Yes, you are. Thank God. All right, let's keep your positive vibes in the chat. Let's move on to the next one. And we're going to be talking about Dokkan's use of duplicates because, honestly, it's probably the best game for it. Like the uh, soul tree, whatever you want to call it, the duplicate tree in Dokkan, if you get four copies, it makes your character even more better than what it already is. So if you get four copies of Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, yeah, it's going to be sucky to pour dupe, but you just put it in that tree, he's going to be a lot stronger. You can also use the other, like, if you get any more dupes after that, if you're incredibly unlucky, and put it to skill up so you get a guaranteed skill up that's obviously not going to go into another game that doesn't give guaranteed skill up <laughs> but yeah you get guaranteed skill up and you how many copies is it you can go all the way up to nine so yeah well it, you it depends nine... on the character i think but in general it depends. Be. yeah you can get nine more copies of a gr and then after that is useless but honestly if you're getting 13 copies of a gr and you're getting 14 after that you're one of the unluckiest guys in the world or you're a goddamn well. They handled the duplicate system very well compared to a lot of other games out there because some games don't even have a duplicate system at all. And really with Dokkan, they just do it right. I don't really want to go, like I'm, I'm I'm, really tempted to start talking about another game right here, so I'm going to keep it positive and just stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the thing is, a lot of games do have positive uses for duplicates. You know, Naruto has positive uses for duplicates. Um, even Ori Collection, although it's only for the first, like, same with Naruto, only for the first, like, five, I think, and then after that, they're basically useless to you, uh, you know, and I like that way of doing things, and Bleach has that too, the first four, I think, are useful, and then after that, well, I suppose you could say five for an extra link or whatever, but in general, once you've got past that point, you just... You're unlucky, sorry, sucks to be you. <laughs> One thing you will say, you know, I know you wanted to shit on this game. I'm going to give it a little bit of credit here. The Ray Store, even though it is, in general, just a burning trash fire, occasionally useful items come in there. And when you've pulled your 16th or 17th copy of God Usopp, you take Fuck him, <laughs> you take him, you put him in the Ray Store, and you can invest those points in something that maybe you want, like an evolver or a book or a ship <laughs> no, or a <laughs> or a maybe skull. Maybe guaranteed skill book. <laughs> no, no, we weren't going to do that. Uh, <laughs> I'm just moving on. I'm just moving on. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um. So, I want to talk some more about Dokkan. Obviously, we're in the, we're in the Dokkan section of the show. Um, and we were just talking about skill ups. Let's carry on from that. Ooh. Percentages on skill ups are set and available to everybody that plays the game to just see you can just Great. see it you know if you've got uh that new legendary rare goku black let's say and you're like yeah this is awesome how many skill ups am i gonna need you see that right there it's like okay i need that many skill ups and then you look at you look at the guy you can farm the goku black you can farm and it's glowing it says what your chance of a skill up is with that character and, you know, that shouldn't, that shouldn't be a feature that should just be part of the game. Yeah, given. <laughs> that should just be a given. Some games don't like just... to do that. What games, Robert? Uh, <laughs> look, let's, like we said, we're not going to turn this into the shit on One Piece show. <laughs> Dokkan handles it the best, though. That's what I'm saying, you know. And I like... I like games where that's not an issue. Like, so on Dokkan, it's like the 50% or 100% for like a perfect dupe or like a whatever. On Bleach, that's not really a thing. Like, skill ups, it's like if you get a dupe, it's just a guarantee. 
and no other characters level them up, so it's just like, I got dupe, well, it's guaranteed, it's kind of cool. And if you look at Naruto, kind of the same thing. I mean, there's not really skill ups, there's like stones and. Uh, I, I, Confusing. I fucking... it's, it's more complicated on Naruto, but the same sort of thing. And you know, I think One Piece at this point is essentially the only game that you need skill ups for characters, but it doesn't tell you the percentage. And it doesn't give you a guaranteed one unless you get the super special awesome tome or whatever the fuck it's called. So, I mean, not like we're not being mean to you, One Piece. <laughs> this is are. just one area that maybe, maybe you maybe need to improve. improve. Maybe um, you know, give you give you a, a C plus for effort. <laughs> but uh, you know, need to need to work on those skill ups. Yeah, uh, do you want to just take it off me before I keep on rambling? <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not, ladies and gentlemen? We're back to Mr. T class. That was a mistake. <laughs> All right. So next thing I want to talk about is my love, my absolute love for the pool mechanic in Dovacan. Best out there, just hands down. Goku throwing his little Kamehameha is the absolute best out there because it just keeps you guessing. Obviously, you got guarantees that if you get Super Saiyan three, if you get Bio Guys, or it's over Freezer, you get a guaranteed SSR. But the amount of times. I pulled back, done a Kamehameha, maybe got like one or two free spaceships in a multi, like, oh god, this is going to be trash. Four or five pulls in, man's got an SSR. I absolutely love it because it keeps you on your toes, like you never know what you're going to get. It's always keeping you guessing. I think it's a fantastic system compared to something like Bleach recently with, um, obviously me and you, we both pulled on the anniversary on Bleach. Yes. The amount of times, done a multi pull straight away, it comes like gold butterfly. I don't care about the pools. I'm just skipping through the pools. If fuck these pools, I'm gone. I know I'm already getting trash. I'm out of here. Whereas well, when you look at a game like Dokkan, oh, I didn't get that many space pods. Oh, I only got Super Saiyan 2, not Super Saiyan 3. But there's a massive chance. And that hope, it keeps the adrenaline flowing. You know, it's like, oh, maybe the next pool is going to be an SSR. Maybe something like that. Say so if One Piece and that, like, their system, once you do a multi pool, Luffy flies through, you get the 10 posters instantly. And if you don't get a red, I'm, generally, I'm just going to skip through them. They're, they're, they're going to be trash, most likely going to be dupes. So I absolutely adore the pool mechanics in this game. And to be honest, not many other games out there do it as well. Like I know Fairy Tower pretty much has a rainbow system and they have the red and blue system. I think with red, obviously it's not guaranteed that you're going to get five star, but there's still a chance. And the blue, you're going to get shit. But Dokkan, it does it nice. Yeah, I think I, I kind of like the way Naruto do it, where it's kind of a tease, where it does like the, ooh, is Sasuke gonna show up? Ooh, is Sakura gonna show up? What's gonna... I think they could expand on that a little bit. And I don't like the fact that it's like, when that final door breaks, it's like, boom, you got fucked. <laughs> Not single yeah. goal. Sucks to be you. And, you know, Ore Collection, I think, is actually handling it really well. Because I think there's, supposedly, there's like a thing where like, with the text, if certain text shows up above your card, that can mean you're guaranteed five star. Uh, but obviously, like, oh, you know that when the card goes through silver, you can still get a rainbow. Gold, you yeah. can still get a rainbow. Rainbow, hey, you got a rainbow. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> one game that handled it terribly, sadly, no longer with us, Seven Deadly Sins, where you just did your pulls and they just all showed up on the, pe on the page at once. It's like, oh, I got nothing. Occasionally, they had a thing where, like, the last pull could change color. That was good, but that only happens sometimes. You know, it's kind of just it's kind of sad. I don't like talking about it. Um, <laughs> moving I'm sad now. <laughs> moving on to our final point uh, of Dokem, we want to talk about the meta and you know the meta breakers and you know just in general the fact that Dokem likes to fuck shit up. It doesn't like to stay in the same way of doing things for very long. But I'll call you that. That's a cool Gogeta you got, by the way. Got this super Vegito now. He's basically better than Gogeta in every way, shape, and form. But, oh, cool. And then like a little bit later, it's like, oh, you see that super, see that super Vegito you got there? That's good. It's a good card. But now <laughs> we've got this Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. He can counter supers. He's like got mad defense stats. He's a god. It's like, oh, that's that's kind of alright. And he's not even the best one. What? <laughs> He released all Amazing. those good units, you know. My boy Cooler, who gets no fame. No fame at all, even though he's like the best one out there. I've got like <laughs> seven people on my friends list that have him and none of them run him. Just makes me cry. Uh, you know, the thing is with Dokkan, you've got all these good units coming through 
especially the LRs as well, which also came out of nowhere. And you start to feel comfortable for about five minutes. <laughs> and then next Tuesday, bang, shit gets real. Shit got real. Dokan said, you know what? It's the 15th anniversary of the death of uh, Yamcha. I, Yamcha. <laughs> We're going to release a brand new 150% leader. Let's go. It's like, what? But, 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 but we just, we just hand of it. I've got no stones left. So don't worry, my son. We'll have new <laughs> events out. You'll be able to farm the stones from them. We'll give you extra stones every day and we'll throw in a sale. And you go, oh, well, you know, that's all right then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you do it. You put, you do your push, you get nothing. You go, Oh, well, I mean, they gave us all those stones, and I mean, the sale is so cheap. What's what's a few shekels to me, you know? I just give it to them, and and happy days. I mean, it means nothing. And the thing is, that's how they make all their money off you. And I'm okay with it. They deserve my money if they steal it off me like that. They deserve <laughs> it. And the thing is, other games just don't quite live up to that, I don't think. They don't have that feeling of a new event comes out, and it's like... Holy shit, everything's on fire, we're fucked. Dokan just like to keep you going, just like going like crazy, because the second you start like chilling and sleeping on banners, they're like, oh, we fucked up. We released a brand new unit and nobody cared. What's going on here? They like to just boom, drop the nuke. And I don't know, like, I'm not going to shit on one piece here. Let's shit on somebody else. Let's shit on, um, I don't know, fucking, there's no one. No, <laughs> let's shit on one piece. <laughs> Fuck one piece, man! <laughs> no, 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 no. But seriously, they they they're kind of predictable with their sugo fest. It's like two a month, sometimes three. Normally, you'll get one repeat sugo fest or one sugo fest without a new legend, and then you'll get a sugo fest with a new legend. Occasionally, you'll get either a raid to a company. That's about it. There's no new sale. There's no new like sudden influx of a crazy amount of stones. There's no, like, crazy events going on. It's like, cool, if I get the 50 and do the multi, then I probably will. But, I mean, do I even care about this character? Probably not. No. Because they're generally shit. Oh, should we just talk about Shanks? Oh, can we, oh, can we not? Can we not? It hurts too no, much. We, we'll do it another time. We'll do it another time. But <laughs> I think you guys know our general opinion on that. Uh, can, we just, can, we, can we just talk about anything else? All right, we're, we're moving on to Naruto now. Okay, All it's right. Naruto time. All We've done the whole Dokkan section. We got a whole little list on. There's not many points for Naruto because I don't play it that much, and even just Robert. Robert's more the purist. So our first point we're actually going to talk about is Ninja Road. That's decent, and it has great in-game content, and they make it worth running more than once because you can farm stuff on Ninja Road. To my knowledge, like I've never actually beaten it because I'm shit at the game. I've lost my accounts. I did have an account that could nearly beat it. But, well, that's gone now and I'm really fucking sad again. So, uh, thanks for bringing that up, Robert. Gosh. I didn't say anything. <laughs> but, no, Ninja Rogue compared to, say, like... Oh, fuck, I'm going to saw for fucking One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> the Training Forest. The Battle Rush. Shit, like, the Training Forest, for example, you'll do once. You know, it is a fun experience. You'll get your fucking Rainbow Gem. You'll get your ship. That's cool. But you're never going to touch it again. You're never going to do Mihawk again. Same with the boss rushes on... Uh, what's it called? Dokkan. Do it once, you'll get you like 30 stones, that's it, you'll never do it again, wait for another one to come out. Obviously Robert said it you earlier, unless you're one of those big boy YouTubers wanting to do a big race doing your like fucking 180 million percent leads that do it in two seconds, that's fine. But Ninja Road, it actually offers you something, to be honest, I'm not the professional at this, I kind of want to let Robert talk about Ninja <laughs> Road because I don't actually know much about it. <laughs> so you get unique characters every season that you can get for beating uh, Ninja Road, farming Granny Cat shop points or whatever and you also get acquisition stones which you can use for like as if they were a dupe on one of your like top tier units you know like a, a minato someone like that you know the madara and I, I you know i really do appreciate that system i like the acquisition side i like you can farm the points and stuff you can get lots of characters lots of goodies and then it switches over to another character the next month and it keeps things going it keeps it interesting um it kind of brings up a, a point that this is an interesting one. Dokan, Naruto, and One Piece are like the boys for this, right? This is one place where Bleach is actually really slacking. And it's one of the reasons why I don't play Fairy Tail that much anymore. There's no end game content. There's hard content, like the nightmare yeah, events. Yeah. But there's no like, this is the thing. Like, I beat this and I'm a god. 
there, there's nothing like that. And I mean, Nightmare, trust me, it's hard. I know it's hard. But with One Piece, when you finally beat that training forest, it's like... It's a feeling you can't describe because it's like every, it's like Rocky, like climbing up the stairs and like a Rocky one. It's like this is this is the first, this is the first time I had all these doubters, especially for us because we stream it. I had all these doubters, yeah. we had all these haters. Look at me now, look at me now. My 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 horse of an account just turned into a fucking Pegasus stallion. Because I beat Mihawk for the first time. That's a long time ago for me now, you know. It's quite easy now. Well, yesterday. <laughs> Fuck you. But my point is, it's it feels like an achievement. And Dokkan yeah. has that with the battle rush as well, with the boss rush. And Naruto, I really feel like Ninja Road is like that. Obviously, the top, top, top guys are going to be farming that constantly. But the first time you beat Ninja Road, no matter what season it was of Ninja Road, it's like, yeah, I did it. Yeah, because it's like it's it's hard. It's genuinely challenging. And Fairy Tale straight up doesn't have that. Bleach straight up doesn't. I mean, you could argue Nightmare Mode, but you don't even really get a lot for beating it anyway. So what's the point? And True. yeah, I don't know. I just I'll start sorting. So just can we move on? Um, sure. <laughs> so Phantom Castle. Let's talk about Phantom Castle. My yes. My boy, Phantom Castle is fucking lit, right? We got so many goodies. So many goodies. It's got its own stamina, so you're not wasting your highly priced, famous, like, use it every day stamina. And that stamina regens at its own pace, or you get extra for free if you get a, if you get a level up, which is pretty fucking good. You can also choose to speed the process up using Ninja Pearls. You get tons of goodies. If you get to floor 100, you get the exclusive character for the event. And <laughs> if you get a high rank or whatever, you can get even more goodies. Now, the reason I favor this way over World Tournament is because in World Tournament, to get the exclusive character, you need to finish top 10,000, which I've only ever done once. It was one of the worst weekends of my life. It was such a hard grind. I used all my dragon stones, and all I got for it was a shitty Goku who shoots a Kamehameha out of his feet. I'm probably never going to use. Realistically, I'm probably never fucking going to use him. And, you know, his art's nice. Like, yes, Ooh, that's nice something. artwork. But if you look at Phantom Castle, some of those Phantom Castle units are genuinely useful. Obviously, the way the meta shifts on Naruto, eventually they won't be, but some of them genuinely are. Um, you could farm them up to max just from being good at the game. If you finish at the top, you just max him out straight away. Um, and you know, it's just, to me, the fact that when I complete those 100 falls, I get the character, that's something special because on Dokkan, most people like will just get the 30 wins or get the 20 consecutive wins or whatever. And that'll be that. And you don't get an exclusive character for that. You get those shitty GSSRs that really don't have a lot of good characters on them. That's about it. There's, I mean, you get some Elder Kai's and some medals and orbs and shit. Cool. Yeah. I mean, goodies are nice. But you don't get the exclusive character unless you're one of the top 10,000, which, as Dokkan would like to remind you, they're on 200 million downloads worldwide, and you've got to finish in the top 10,000 in your, well, not necessarily region, but in your version of the game. That's kind of fucked up. And, you know, I mean, sure, you can pull them later from the guaranteed SSR when they get added later down the line. Yeah. I just, I like Phantom Castle, okay? And I wish I wish oh, it really? was I wish it was on uh, One Piece, and it was called like um, Oh Shit. <laughs> oh, I don't fucking say that. <laughs> I don't know what you'd fucking call it. Have have instead of Phantom Castle, have Impel Down. Ooh. And you go down the levels of Impel Down, and if you get to the bottom, you get the exclusive level six Impel Down character, and it could be like a new a new unit that's like actually genuinely useful. There you go, Bandai. There you go, Bandai. Idea. Take take my points and then take my money later. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're supposed to pay you. No, pay me and move on. Let's move on. All right, move on to the last Naruto point. All right, this is actually my one. I really like this one because I've been playing Naruto recently because I've got a brand new unit. Go watch the video. It's a great unit. All right, I like that when you've done a mission, any mission whatsoever, there's a little next mission button. It just takes you straight into the next mission with the same friend, Captain. 
Something so simple, but it's just a fantastic feature they implemented around about a month or two ago. And even at first, I was like, damn, I, I think I even said to Robin the Cool, like, when did this come here? This is actually just such a useful feature because obviously in something like One Piece, you do your run, gotta go out, gotta click in again, gotta slip the frame captain, gotta load it up, you gotta go. Just, it just saves you so much time and also as well with the limited friend captains and stuff like that especially with Naruto because the friends list is so small it's small like Dokkan as well and obviously if you ain't got the best friends running like I don't know Cubic Folk Naruto something like that getting one of those and constantly be able to just running it over and over and over again it's absolutely fantastic such a little feature but it's highly appreciated yeah I think for me especially um, where I always forget at the end of runs to add people and it's gotten to the point where I only have like four people on my friends list and they're all inactive. Like, it's really a nice touch when I'm just like, yo, this guy has got hmm. fucking Toby, like, and it's the good one. If I use <laughs> him, then I can just clear everything. And it's like, wait a minute. I can literally just use him to clear. You can clear like a whole uh, like set of stages from story mode without having to switch captain, without just click next order next order and just get it all done and you know i i wouldn't suggest such um such bad practices that shouldn't be done they're very illegal but if you wanted to set up a script to auto farm for you then maybe naruto is actually quite a optimal game for that on certain events just saying i would never do such a thing because i'm a upstanding citizen but i know that certain people would and you know uh it opens the door to that. Let's move on before I go to jail. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk about Ore Collection. My favourite yes. subject. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, every character in Ore Collection, my favourite game, can be made into a five star. No favouritism here. Now, the thing I love about this is every character bar one at the moment, which I would say is Zeno Zoldi. Every character is useful. In some way, shape, or form, you can make it use for them. Which means that sometimes you might not run the most optimal team. Instead, you might decide, you know what? If I just take these five characters that I love and put them in a team together, that can work too. And I could just I can just have a nice team that works together. Now, you know, at the moment, I've got my, my red team. I've got Sagada Sanosuke. One of my... Oh, one of my favorite characters from Kenshin and you know the thing is straight up he's he's okay he's not great he's okay he's okay but I get to choose who I run in my team because I'm in charge because it's my collection not your collection and I can play whoever I want because they're all five stars and they're all cool and fuck you I play who I want and I like that <laughs> It's a game where I get to choose. And, you know, on One Piece, if I'm like, you know what? Belmare, legitimately, <laughs> one of the best characters in the story. You know, she actually has a decent story behind her. She's a, a, a big part of why Nami is even remotely interesting. You know, and, you know, the whole thing with her and Nojiko and the Marines and, like, the kind of uh, the, the Fishman Pirates and stuff. That's such a great story. I'm going to use her. And then you go to put her in your team, you're like, Oh my god, her stats are so bad. And, you know, her special's okay. I think she delays for one turn or something oh, like that. Oh, fuck, really? Which, you know, early game, when people yeah, didn't know that Gold Pan Usopp existed, even though he's a free-to-play unit, uh, they were like, whoa, Belmed delays for one turn? That's crazy! <laughs> but nowadays, you know, you get you get a one-turn delay on basically every, every other unit that gets released, so... It's, it's maybe not as good. And so you can't really fit him into the team. Now, if I go to other games, sure, Bleach, a lot of the older characters, if you're if, if you're a hard worker, you can make any character work in Bleach. You can make any yeah. character. You can use raid five stars and you can beat some of the like uh, hardest raids if you just dodge a lot. But there is, you know, obviously Danga Ichigo, Fullbring Ichigo, you know, characters of that sort of tier that just kind of make all that other shit pointless. I just, I like Ore Collection. I like that you can do, you can just use whoever you want, okay? I just, there, I said it. All right, guys, if you couldn't already tell, I think Robert likes Ore Collection <laughs> a little bit. 
Like, I don't love this game that much. It is a good game. All right, we're going to be talking about the next point. And I do like this as well. This is one of Robert's points earlier because he is the whale of this game. So he pretty much knows it. I'm not the inside whale. There out. are whales. Oh, but you're getting there. Out, right? of, the, out of the two of us, we're like, you know, I'm a dolphin. You're a, you're a sperm whale. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So... I'm not a big fan of the scene mechanics in games, like in Diamond Records, stuff like that. I personally didn't really like it that much, especially because in Diamond Records, you had to spend actual the currency, the diamond coins. Same with like One Piece Thousand Storm. Like the whole game was about scenes, so I didn't really like it from the get-go. But the way Ore Collection uses their scenes, which we said in the last podcast, is actually really nice, the way they implemented it into the game. And we both like that they're purchased with a different currency compared to, you know, obviously your pay-to-play characters, you know, you use, I don't know, what they call, like, jump spears, something like that. Jump spears, yeah. Jump orbs. You're called jump spear, yeah. You get characters <laughs> from there, but to get scenes, you use, like, a farmable currency, which you get from pretty much just doing everything. So it's nice that it's separate. Obviously, as we said in the podcast before, if those scenes were incorporated with the pay-to-play currency, I'd never pull for them, and I'd never level up at all, <laughs> and I'd be stuck down at, like, level one. So, yeah, there's that. Yeah, so... I just, like, in general, the way scenes work in this game is fantastic, you know? You equip them to characters for buffs, you, you know, use them for leveling up, because obviously you need to get that stamina bar up, bro. You need to get those, like, uh, deck bonuses and shit going, you know what I'm saying? But the scenes themselves as items are useful, and we're going to get even more use to them later, because apparently you will be able to level them up, that's how it seems to be. That's currently not available to us, but it will be, soon. Just relax, chillax, all good. Um, chillax, you don't worry. And you know, we didn't have a lot of points from our collection. The thing is, as much as I enjoyed the game, it's still young. It's still a little baby. So I don't want to, you know, I don't want to force it yet. I just like, give it time. Let it become its own thing. But th- those two points, the scenes and the, every character being a five star, to me, are, are top, you know. And I think any game where I can equip items and other characters and scenes and stuff like that and customize the characters i want the way i want you know a shout out to bleach on this one you know the, the amount of different work you can do to make a you know normal attack build a strong attack build a you know a special healer team you know a spiritual build you can change the way you build up characters and the same with Ore collection any game that does that props to you You've put the four in, you know, and sadly, another another sad, um, <laughs> Seven Deadly Sins was one of the games that put four into that. It was one of the, it was one of the first games. Well, Bleach, I suppose, was the first, but it was one of the first games that had items that you could equip that let you change the way characters played. And sadly, sadly, it's no longer with us, as you may already know, and. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good time to stop talking about Seven Deadly Sins in our collection and move on to the next game. Move on to the next game, which is going to be Bleach, which we've already bummed a little bit, but we're going to give all the points right now. So our first one, it's a feature that not many of these games have. It's a co-op feature, and it's be able to keep playing co-op, even if you have no tickets. So if you didn't already know, Bleach is amazing, okay? So I'm just going to put that out there, right? So if you go into co-op, you get so many bonuses for actually just hosting the game itself. But if you run out of tickets and you don't feel like gemming or soul gemming, whatever it's called, for tickets, you could just go into a lobby. This guy's host lobby. I'll go and I'll play. Get drops. Obviously, if it's new characters, like if you're new to Bleach and that, you're going to get soul orbs for doing, you know, matching up with other characters to begin with and stuff like that. But it's literally, you can sit there playing co op all day, farming for characters, farming raids, farming powders, farming whatever you want. It's just a really nice feature, it just keeps the game going, and as we said before many times, it's a game that we have open all the time. You know, Bleach is one of those ones where I come to do my daily anime runs, I'll have that open first. By the time I've got through all my other games, logging in, doing a little bit of that, Bleach is still open, because there's just so much to do. There's so much to do with your normal stamina, then you go over to co- like co-op, do your tickets there, hosting, get your extra goodies. Then you feel like not you know, spending more tickets and that, you can just go do some more co-op for free more goodies i think it's fucking fantastic yeah i think the, the thing about the stamina tickets in, in bleach that, that kind of puts them apart is because obviously uh, if you have played naruto you know that the co-op is incredibly similar to bleach in that um 
when you you know join join a room, you don't have to pay for the stamina for the run. It's only the guy hosting, and I like that. But and also I do think that um, there's a lot of things added in to Bleach in terms of you know setting up the room, um, you know choosing what colors are restricted and what levels are restricted and stuff. I like that, and I think Naruto could maybe you know learn I from that. that. But other than that, you know, I think Naruto and Bleach in general are doing quite well on the co-op front. But the stamina tickets in Bleach, the way that Good ties boy. in, is like when we first joined Bleach, we were like, what? There's no level system. There's no stamina bar. There's You just kind of play and these tickets disappear. Okay. It seems weird at first, but in the long run, a lot more worthwhile. Definitely a lot more worthwhile. The way they handle it is just so much better. Uh, you know, if I if I'm on my run of uh, Kanjuro in the Colosseum in One Piece, and I'm doing a 50 stamina double drop run, it's gonna cost me 100 stamina, and just yep. one little misclick, one little oh, fuck boy. up on a perfect, and you die, that's it, and you done, that's 100 stamina down the drain. Do you know how long it takes for 100 stamina to come back? Now, compare that to Bleach. Oh, I fucked up a raid Ichigo run. I need those Ichigos. Well, it doesn't matter, bro. Because even though that's one of the harder stages in the game, it only costs one ticket. Every stage in the game costs one ticket. And, you know, that's... Uh, one thing... We've got another point from another game, Kenshin. Kenshin had yeah. no stamina bar at all. And Bleach has no level system at all. And when I looked at the two things, I thought, that's fucking stupid. In the long yeah. run, one of those things has aged a lot better than the other. Having the stamina tickets, having no level system works fine. I genuinely love Bleach, the way they handle that. Kenshin, on the other hand, having no stamina system, the game is just fucking boring. And yeah. I kind of hate to say that because I love Kenshin as a series and I love, you know, being able to play with my favorite characters from that. Well, not exactly because... It's like free. There's like... Well, there's like four or five at this point, I think. But damn, you know the the way they've handled the characters and stuff. I just, I think they kind of fucked it up. I'm just gonna be honest. I think they kind of fucked it up. I kind of fell for the hype. But with Bleach, it's kind of got the longevity of just you know you just keep playing, just keep using stamina tickets, just keep playing, playing, playing. There's so much content, and it's all good. It's all good, man. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> we're moving on to the next point. We're staying with the topic of Bleach because we're not done yet. And we're going to be talking about the ranked events and that they actually give good rewards because most games nowadays are copying the hype of, say, Bleach and stuff like that, are introducing ranking events. The theme with Bleach, you do a ranking event, you have many, many different tiers. It tells you all the tiers and all the goodies you can get. But what I love about it is just you. You can just sit there, you do it yourself, you do it in your own time, not competing against anyone else. You go for it, you do your farming, you get your points, it levels up, you get your tears, get your gems, get your raid drops, whatever. It's great. Whenever they have a, like a point event, I always go ham. I think Robert always goes ham. Because usually I'll be like, oh, Robert, how you doing on the event? He's like, I'll be like, he'll be like, oh, how are you doing? I've got like 40,000 points, he's got like 8 million. And that's usually how I it I ain't goes. got no 8 million, don't be talking that shit. I just... <laughs> Alright. <Okay. laughs> whatever. 2 million. <laughs> but no, if we compare it to other games, like One Piece recently had their first points event. And there was a lot of hype about it. No, I was somewhat looking forward to it, how they were going to do it, but they handled it so bad. Like, they did some things right, they gave away some goodies in that, but they made it about a competition. They made it about, oh fuck, I'm sorry about One Piece now, but I'm going to keep doing it, okay? i got to mention it. One Piece made it about being a competition, and I didn't like that. I like that with a ranking event, it should just be about you. It should just be about you farming, and you if you put in the effort, you put in the time, or you just put in the effort, you get to the set goal, you get everything. Whereas with One Piece, it was pretty much a thousand people, the top whales in the world, people that literally had no life, were going to get the good rewards. So pretty much, if you're an average player out there, you were going to get jack shit. And that's why I like One Piece, or I fucking hate One Piece, that's why I like Bleach. Because it just does it so well. If you put in the time, you obviously, they will give you the time, the event lasts long enough for the average player to go through, get the uh, XP, or whatever the fucking numbers required, and get all the goodies. I've done it a few times, Robert's done it a few times. It's amazing. Yeah, I I really struggled with that One Piece event. I did, because 
it wasn't that I wasn't able to do it. I could have found that Alkaji event the whole weekend, the same as I would with a world tournament. The fact of the matter is, the rewards aren't good enough. They're just not. It, I would have had to have spent so many rainbow gems on stamina just to keep myself in the running there. And it just, it wasn't worth it for me. I just wasn't. And, you know, the same thing with Dokkan. I've spent so many dragon stones on stamina. It just wasn't worth it. Straight up wasn't worth it. At least on Bleach, I can even just use my normal tickets. I don't have to, like, gem for stamina ever, basically, on Bleach, you know? Just use my normal tickets I get and the tickets they give you in the event. And I can get all the points I need to get the rewards I feel like I deserve. So, I, I, I just prefer that way of doing things that might just be a personal preference thing i don't know um but moving on bleach you can play on two devices not at once but you can have two devices probably more devices i don't even know logged into the same bleach account and so if i could be i could be playing at home you know i could be sitting here doing my runs whatever and then it's like okay i'm done i close the game i go out i get on the bus to go down to like i don't know tesco or whatever <laughs> and it's like, you know what? It's been about 15 minutes. I've probably got another stamina ticket. Bang out the phone. Bleach Brave Souls. Look at that. Playing the same game that I'm playing at home. But there's, there's my stamina ticket right there. I'm on the bus. I'm chilling. I'm like, let's do a couple of runs on the bus, you know? At this point, <laughs> everybody's staring at me, you know? They're like, what's this kid doing? It's like, I'm playing Bleach. They're like, ah, I see. Carry on, good sir. And, you know, I just... We're just going to gush about Bleach. Let's be honest. Bleach is just... It's just good. It just is. Best thing since sliced bread. Uh, I, I, if, if, if you're okay with this, I'm just going to go through the last few Bleach points and we can just move on. So just quickly, right? On Bleach, login bonuses yes. are legit, right? And it's not just Bleach. Though can handle this quite well too. Um, some games don't handle it well. Not going to say which one. Um, <laughs> but... Dokkan and Bleach, in general, the login bonuses are legit. Right, straight up. When you go and you and you log in, you get this monthly bonus. And it's all these goodies that by themselves are not that great. But across the month, you're getting stuff like Hogyoku's, which you need. Hogyoku's wills, which you need. Gold tickets, silver tickets, brave soul tickets, stamina tickets. Uh, just tons and tons of stuff that you're going to use. It's stuff that you're genuinely going to use. When I log into Naruto and I see 250 friend points. When I log into Dokkan and I see five bubbles medals. I don't care. Yeah. That's just gonna it's just gonna sit in my in my box. Because I already got 999. I don't need any more. I still got all the friend points I need on Naruto. I don't need any more. Now, at least with One Piece, the logins are so bad, they don't exist. You just get like a gem a day. Occasionally, they'll do something special where you get some friend points or you get like a, a turtle a day or something. But the rewards are so bad, they can't be disappointing because you don't expect anything. But on Naruto, it's like, oh, cool, they've got this logging campaign. What is it? It's like, get an extra ninja pearl on like an egg. It's like, oh, thanks. <laughs> I love an egg. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for that two stamina, two star uh, ramen cup. Gonna use that. Gonna use that all the time. Oh, what's that? half a level on one of my shitty characters awesome uh, i'm not trying to sort i'm not i'm just saying that bleach does it well if i get a hogyoku do you know what that means to me do you know how many fucking five stars i have that need to be awakened there you go a lot there you go uh, i'll leave the last one i'll leave the last one fuck i don't even know what i was writing there. <laughs> i don't know what you're right that's why i let you have it <laughs> i'm leaving this in the video like i just i just i think my brain stopped while i was writing that <laughs> End of Bleach, great game, alright? It does a lot, right? It just simply is. It, it, uh, we said it before, Bleach could have been a DS game. It's, it's fantastic. It's a good game. Okay? It's a good game. We're going to go on to something we've kind of been sorted about, if you can't already tell. You know, I know it's been a very positive commentary, there's, there's been no negativity at all. <laughs> we could be talking about the One Piece Treasure Cruise. We've been played a little bit, you know, put a few hours into this game. We're going to be talking about the positives on that game. So we start off with the first one. Robert put this point, and some people will argue this, <laughs> but some raids and other free-to-play characters are generally useful, and I actually do agree with this. Like, it's not Garp the Fist, you know, you're not going to be running fucking double Garp teams out there, or for even double Blackbeard anymore, but some legit raid characters out there are good, like Evasion Shank, stuff like that, if that counts as a raid, will technically have to be a raid. Uh, we're not going to get into that, but yeah, there are characters out there, like Raid Sabo, 
Obviously, fantastic. Bray Boa, she's fantastic. There are generally good free-to-play units out there in this game, and it does make it somewhat more free-to-play friendly than, I don't know, say your Dokkan battles and stuff like that, even though it is a massive, and I mean a massive grind fest, unless you get lucky to skill ups. But generally with One Piece, you got to give it to it. You can build free-to-play friendly teams. Obviously, when well, you got that 5-plus Luffy for free, if you are lucky to get the skull, or otherwise you're going to have to get to, what is it, Shabundi, something like that, No, the 3D2Y Islands. I just never get the drop. But generally the game can be beat free to play, which is something to One Piece's credit, not a lot of get not a lot of other games can be beaten free to play. Yeah, I think the one thing you've got to give One Piece credit for, and we show on it a lot, we do. Like I'll, I'll be the first to admit it, we show on One Piece a lot. The one thing you gotta give them credit for is if you look at all the other games at any one time, in terms of the like meta, the top top characters. Whether it be raids, whether it be gacha characters, whatever, you're probably not looking at more than like 10, 20, maybe 30 characters that are genuinely relevant and needed for specific teams, right? You look at One Piece and they've actually done quite a good job. You got your your Dofi that you use for everything, your Gold Pound Usopp that you use for everything. You got more recent raids like Invasion Shanks and you know just like. Tons of tons of raids, tons of invasion characters, tons of Colosseum characters. Genuinely useful. Genuinely characters you can use. I'm looking at fucking Raid Sabo for like basically clearing all the trading forest by himself while everyone else is zombie yeah. and you know. And <laughs> the thing is, like I I appreciate that aspect of One Piece. There's a lot of things I hate about it. I appreciate that aspect, you know, because I go over to Dokan. And i got this massive box full of characters. Some of them I've even gone out of my way to max them out and stuff. And I basically just use the same six characters over and over again. And yeah, that's, that's about it, you know. Once you've got a team that works, why use anything else? Same with Bleach. Once you've got a unit that can beat everything in the game, why would you bother using anything else? And I mean, like, in the instance... So I've got, like, four Bring Ichigo. It can beat everything. And if there's a stage that he can't beat somehow, let's say it's a, you know, it's a stage that he struggles with, like a blue stage. Wait, no, he's good at blue stages. It's like a red stage that he struggles with. There you go. Um, I'll, just bang, I'll just bang out the Danga Ichigo. Does the job. I know everybody doesn't have that luxury, but you, you get what I'm saying. In terms of the top, 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 the meta, you know, if I'm making an Akainu team, what could, I, the amount of subs I could have. It could be anybody, you know? Crabs. But, Crabs. <laughs> I, was, I really didn't know what you were saying for a second there. You could, you could give your kind of crabs. Um, you know, time skip Luffy, like the freedom team has changed. And if you six plus him, you can make a fighter team. And it's just, there's so many different ways to make this shit work. And I don't know. I just, I like that. I like that. I do. Um, anyway, moving on. Then the Mushis. They're good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just like, what is there to say? I want to say that, like, oh, it's great that you always you can get, like, these extra bars of stamina and all these goodies. The fact of the matter is... But you're not. <laughs> all that's in there is belly and yellow teenage turtles, and that's it. There's nothing else I there. Love... There's nothing it's else in there. It's, it's fucking bullshit. You get the occasional cola. It's like, ooh, ooh, I, what have I done to deserve this oh. honour? No, okay, look, <laughs> let's, let's not shit on them. During events, when they give the stamina rate up, that is top quality. But I want to see a little bit more spice in there. I want to see, you know, like, cotton candies being added permanently. Maybe, like, gems are in there, but they're a fucking myth. I've had them on one global account 16 years ago. Like, Never had them. It just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen that often. So, try and add in stuff like almighty tomes or manuals or whatever the fuck they're called secret books and all that add all the goodies you can imagine in there and then just make them rare because they're already like you've already got shit in there that's rare anyway and like you know just why not what's wrong with that what's what's, what's so bad what i don't know no 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 stop that's not sort of one piece <laughs> you're about to then. i was about to let's move on to something more positive go ahead go ahead terry you tell him it's gonna be a positive point guys you ready for positivity Okay, I like the invasions. I, I really do. I like invasion shanks. I like invasion white beard. I don't like Cavendish because I've never beaten him. I don't think I've actually gotten to him. So, yeah, but no, I like. Uh, we didn't really want to talk about the gameplay features and stuff like that because the objective and all the games are really different and that. But 
I like the evasions of how they appear after raids and that because you have to build a team that can beat that raid comfortably but that can also be the evasion raid and I really like that it really added in some sort of spice the way whoever wants to put it a little bit of spice yeah they change teams up a little bit like say if I was doing Dorothy it's like oh yeah I gotta put in time skip Nami because I need her for Shanks she's gonna be useless to me against Dofi but I need her for Shanks but I'm sacrificing a team slot so it makes uh, Dofi a little bit harder I like it I really do like that feature and not many other games have that afterwards you know Naruto definitely doesn't have that where you do something on extra island I don't even know if that game has the equivalent of raids even the same with Bleach and that as well I like it it's something as well with have hidden you know more difficult to get content and that obviously with your six star plus characters and that the only way to get the skulls is obviously through the ready store let's not talk about the ready store at all you could buy it through there but the main way to get it is through these raids and they're generally difficult content like obviously shanks and that i have a team that can clear it easy now same as white being that but obviously for players that aren't on you know our pay to play level and that it's gonna be quite a bit of a challenge and obviously for them to get that rainbow chest oh the first time i got my first rainbow chest my heart was pumping when i got the shanks it's like oh boy i don't want to fuck this up you know, this, this is a really big moment for me. I need these skulls to get these characters level up. And of course, the first time I fucked it up and I nearly cried. But that that's a given. That's going to happen. But really, the evasions for me are like content in One Piece that I really do appreciate. And I hope that they add in more later on. Like maybe an evasion Blackbeard, something like that. Because it really changed the dynamic of the raids and that. Because like I got a set team of all the raids. Like, both you now, I could just take a double Akane team or whatever. Or, I don't know, Bora, I'll take a double gear 40. Actually, I'll take double gear 4 for everything. But, <laughs> you know, if they bring along a harder raid, i got to change my team around a little bit to beat that raid and obviously beat the evasion raid at the same time. And I think it's just it's good fun content. And that's all I can really say. Yeah, I think... I, I couldn't really put my finger on why I liked it so much at the beginning. Like, you know, trying to make the better teams and whatever. I've kind of realised it just now while we're recording... The reason I like this so much goes back to a game from my childhood, way, 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 way back. Super Smash Brothers. Where when you'd be doing a stage, occasionally, if certain prerequisites were met, you'd get to the end and suddenly, bang, new challenger approaching. And the silhouette of a character shows up. The first time that happened, I was like, what? What do we do? And then suddenly, boom, <laughs> you're in the stage and you're fighting them. And you have to beat them. If you don't beat them, they're gone. I mean, you can get them back later, but for now, they're gone. And you, if you beat them in the moment, you get them. And you're like, yeah, what the shit just happened? I remember when I was playing uh, Melee, and I think, who was the first character to up in Melee? It was either Luigi or Jigglypuff or someone like that. Oh, damn. And I just remember just being like, what? What the fuck's going on? And you beat it, and you get that character, and it's so rewarding. And the thing is... One Piece has kind of replicated that in a way, and I really do appreciate it. And it like it, it makes things more complex in terms of team building, and it makes things feel more rewarding. And it's just it's a nice feature. I like it. I really do. One of the only things, right, that One Piece has that no other game is replicating right now. No other game is doing this. So shout out to them, because we, we give you a lot of shit. We do, but. I don't know. I, I go give him that one. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Love you, One Piece. <laughs> well, I believe that's our last point on One Piece. Should we move on? I, I don't even know what's next. I'm excited to find out. Oh, excited to find out. Okay, basically, we got the shit. <laughs> I mean, the other anime games that we play. Oh, we've seen a lot of the big boys, and I, I can just run through them real quick. So I've only got three points here. I'm not going to lie. So we already talked about Kenshin with their fucking, you know, no stamina at all. So technically, you can play that game to the end of time. So if you really love Kenshin, go bang that out. Yeah, you got to give credit where credit is due. Not having a stamina system, you can't really find faults with that. Like, at all. I know Robert was, like, powering it a little bit earlier when he was comparing it to Bleach. But, you know, no stamina is a really good thing. I wish I didn't have any stamina in One Piece because then I'll just fucking max out everything in, like, a day. But what have you. But now I'm going to go to a game that I really enjoy like, I know a lot of other people like it out there because of the gameplay, but Stardust Shooters. And it's really two features in that because that game does a lot right and it does a lot wrong. But we're not here to be negative, so I'm not going to talk about the negatives today. We're going to talk about two things uh, that they do right. And firstly, that's like their equipping system. So basically in the little, like, circle, flying disc, pogs, whatever they are, you can equip other characters to characters. 
And it's not just like with like Bleach and that, you know, straight, st uh, like a straight up stat boost, something like that, you know, plus attack, plus HP, whatever. On starter shooters, certain characters will give different abilities. Like, what's Jotaro? If you put him onto a character, you know, your character will get like five additional attacks. If you use Shingechi, he gives a fucking an incredibly overpowered ability. And it's just an amazing system because you can create so many different teams. You can create characters that just have so many different abilities, so many different effects that come up on screen. And it really just. It makes the gameplay different. I'm surprised, like, obviously Bleach hasn't done anything like that, but I don't really know how they'd implement it. And obviously, I think you said earlier that Seven Deadly Sins had a system like that, but, well, that game's dead and gone now, so hopefully Stardust Shooters doesn't follow it. But I really enjoyed that system. And the next point is for Stardust Shooters again, and it's to do with the pool mechanics and that. Obviously, we like a good deal. If you can't really tell, we love a good deal. Anything for free is fine by me. And obviously, two major things that Stardust Shooters do is uh, one major thing is, like, when they have an event on, when they have like a big boy character come out, which is probably like the 20th Kira or something like that. There's something called Bites the Dust of Activate, where I believe it's by chance, but I think on certain you know, multi pulls and that, or like your best character you pull in that multi will get upgraded. And I think that is fucking awesome because I believe I got Bites the Dust Activate on one of the anniversaries recently where I got SP Kira. And he got upgraded and he was already a better unit out of the box. It was fucking fantastic. I would love, or well, obviously, I think One Piece is doing that nowadays where there is a chance where you can get, shout out to One Piece again, where a character can come at max, spe uh, max special and have chances of having sockets as well, which I think is cool. But Stardust Shoot Who has been doing this since like, the beginning, so I've got to give credit for that. And also, the last thing about Stardust Shoot which I absolutely love, is obviously you've got Josuke doing his little like, aura aura thing. At the end of your multi, you have a chance of getting additional pulls. I'm not too sure what it goes up to. I believe it's only around about 3 maximum. I don't know if it goes any further. But I think that's an absolute amazing system. So for 35 gems, you'll get 7 pulls plus 2 free. Then you'll get your bonus pulls at the end. So you can essentially get like 12 pulls or something like that. And I think it's a really great system in that. Because you know you might have a dead multi. Like, oh no, this is terrible. And obviously Crazy Diamond comes up, smashes that wall, you just got an SSR out of nowhere for free. And it's just amazing. Because I've had that a few times where if I, I think he's even on this channel, had a couple of dead multis. Like, oh man, this video's gone terrible. At the end, last pull, got one pull for free. Just got an SSR for free. So I, I like a system like that where it just rewards the players. Like, here you go. It's a little bit of RNG, but you never know. You might get something. And got to give credit where credit's due. And to be honest, that was all we could find with the other anime gadget games out there. We play a lot. Don't get us wrong, we play a lot, like obviously the Boku no Hero Academia game. But a lot of those games are young, they're obviously copying the other games right now, and they don't really have their own unique identities. And they're struggling, like, they do things that are, you know, are good, and, you know, great features and that, but they're not good enough to be on this illustrious OCHD seal of approval feature list. <laughs> but now, we're going to be moving on to general, like absolute just general, like, like any games in general that have these features are amazing. And... Would you like to start us off? Yeah, let's go. So, any game that has SNS instead of passwords, shout out to you. I know a lot of games do it now. You know, in the past, a lot of games did not have this feature. And that was kind of fucked up. The thing is, straight up, I'm forgetful. And I'm complacent. Yeah. And, you know, people make mistakes. And sometimes, you'll, you'll say it with a screenshot of your details. And sometimes, you'll redeem those details. And you'll forget to take another one. That's a problem for you, because if your emulator crashes or whatever, and you lose the details, you're fucked. Simple as you're fucked. We've lost multiple games to that over the years, and uh, SNS sorts that all out. So shout out to Bleach with their SNS. Shout out to Dokan. Shout out to Naruto. Wait, Naruto doesn't have Fuck Naruto. <laughs> shout out to One Piece with their SNS. I love One Piece! We all love One Piece. Any game that's got SNS, shout out to you. Ore Collection, definitely shout out to you. Out of the box, fresh pack, open you up. What's this? SNS. Love it. I love it too. <laughs> Alright, next feature that we like to see in any games and that. And these are like obviously just general ones that they just have to be there. And we like any game that separates the items, boosters, and evolvers from the character blocks uh, box. This is just a feature just you need. Because if you play these character games and that, obviously the systems, characters require a load of things. Like obviously raid characters are needed to max out characters on Bleach. One Piece, you need evolvers, you need uh, fucking uh, turtles to level up, you need tomes, you need skill ups. You, you, your box gets full, right? On One Piece right now, my box is probably full 
like over one third of your survivors and just general crap that I need to level up and that. Any game that separates this, godsend. Bleach recently, like they used to have with the items and that. We used to have the hearts and that that you used to uh, level up accessories and that. They used to be all part of one box and that. And oh boy, it got crammed quickly. But they separated it now. They separated it. You got all your hearts in one section. All those evolvers by there by themselves. I don't. I think is it unlimited? Can that go up to unlimited? No. Oh, but I've got a load just sitting there. Right? So it's a pretty high limit already to begin with. But it's just absolutely appreciate that they separate it. I think you also said earlier as well that Naruto now does separate some of its stuff yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Naruto, I would say, does it best. Like, I would want to say Bleach does it best, but the fact that the matter is uh, with Bleach, there is still a box limit. Um, actually, now I think about it, the hearts might be unlimited. I think the crystals also used to be limited and they're now maybe not limited or it's like a high limit or whatever. I don't know. But with Naruto, it's just kind of like everything in one. Your ramen, your... your uh, tokens for the crystal shop or whatever like um all your raid crystals or whatever all this shit all of it all in its own box and all the, the and the character box that you've spent your gems on expanding and whatever it's all characters that's all it is now and you could just raid as farm as many copies as you want without going over the <laughs> limit and you know i think that's pretty fucking special uh you know other games are close dokan is close um getting there it's getting there i think on my hero academia everything's separate i might be wrong but i think that's the case so that's good i believe so um fairy tale technically most stuff is separate on fairy tale except the boosters fairy tale is a fucking mess to begin with so let's not get into that <laughs> no negativity no negativity sorry uh seven deadly sins i do believe everything was in separate Box. Oh no! Actually, the boosters and like the I uh, and the and the coin items are in the same box. That's why Fairy Tail died, guys. Warning. <laughs> That's one of many <laughs> reasons. Uh, Seven Deadly Sins. Sorry, died. Um, Fairy Tail doesn't do it that great. One Piece. Oh boy. One Piece. I'm sorry. I'm taking you to the principal's office here. I don't like to shit on the games like we said it before. Well, we do actually enjoy it quite a lot, but we're trying not to. <laughs> yes. We're trying. Right now, I've got to say, that's a problem. To me, that's a problem for you. Because my box is full to the fucking brim of evolvers and books and crap, skulls and boosters and fuck knows what else. And I just, I don't need that negativity in my life. I don't need to be like, oh boy, I gotta stop this crazy. <laughs> Like, I'm farming Dofi, got to stop and f fix my box. Oh, got to stop and fix my box again. Especially during that points event for Alkaji. And you're on a run of like 10, 20, 50 runs, whatever. Oh, got to stop. Oh, got to get all this shitty cotton candy out of my box or whatever. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. It's not, <laughs> it's not needed. Look, you make... No, alright. We're going to get a little bit sore here. You make enough fucking money, alright? Don't do that. Bad boy. <laughs> Alright. There's a positive ego, I'm, man. I'm sorry. Moving on to a, a lighter note. <laughs> Any game with an additional stamina system. We're looking at, um, well, mainly Bleach. But to be fair, uh, not Stardust Shoot, is the other JoJo game. What's it called? Diamond Records. Diamond Records. And Ore Collection. Th those three, those are my boys. Because they are the ones that offer a way to get stamina other than refills. That is like a item, and it, that's an important distinction. Because on one piece you can get the then the mushi, which gives you a stamina refill. That's nice. It is nice, but not guaranteed though. Not guaranteed. With this, this is a guaranteed item that sits in your box. It doesn't like take up any space or anything. It's just a thing that you have, and whenever you feel like using that, you can use it. If a weekend comes around and there's an event you want to do, it's like, well, I saved all these items when I didn't need to do stuff. Used them, and I stamina, and I can go do what I want. On our collection, those capsules are pretty dope. Uh, you get those for overflow stamina and that, which, that's a unique overflow system, which I kind of like because it kind of puts it above everything else because when I get an overflow like from a level up on One Piece, sometimes it's just after I've done all the runs I needed and I just look there at my like 350 stamina 
and I just like I can't be fucked. I want to go to bed. <laughs> you know? Yeah. With Ore collection, it's like, well, here's your overflow. Uh, you want to use this later? It's like, yes, yes, please. I think I'll store that for later. But I think uh, that that's handled best by them. In terms of an item you can use any time, uh, I'm kind of torn between Bleach and Diamond Records because they both do it well. It's just an item that you just use and you just get stamina, and that's great. Uh, but I think I'm going to give it to Bleach just because Ooh. you get so many fucking tickets for free in that game. They just want you to play. They are a games company that wants you to play and enjoy your game. Which is Damn, really? Which is unbelievable. But the thing is, in in this kind of like pessimistic world where every game just seems to be a quick cash grab, the guys at Caleb, who are making a lot of money off this, obviously they're making a lot of money off this, they have taken time to make a game that is not only fun, not only engaging, and has a degree of not just shitty RNG, which a lot of the other games have, you know, if I get bad orbs on One Piece and it fucks me and that, that pisses me off, on, on, Dr on Dokkan, where you get supered and you didn't think you were going to get supered and you die, or whatever, you know. Look at Bleach. Because, yeah, you do get fucked sometimes, but it's because of you. It comes down to you. <laughs> yeah. It's you playing the game. Because it's a game. It's not, you know, when I play Legend of Zelda when I was a kid, it's like, it wasn't like, oh, sorry, you rolled a bad, bad orb so you died. It's like, what? It's like, oh, so yeah, you can't beat that boss. Yeah, yeah. yeah he supered and you didn't expect it. It's like, no, there's like, there's patterns and there's ways to play and you read the game and you play through the game. And I know not every game has to be like that. Every, you know, and you could argue that in one piece, if you prepare enough, you'll never be fucked by RNG. You'll just be every stage, every time. Fair enough. Fair enough. I will say the way it's done, the way it's handled in Bleach, I really appreciate it. We've gone way off topic here. I'm just saying, <laughs> shout out to Bleach for making a game that's actually a fucking game. Love you, Caleb. Love you, Caleb. All right, let's let's go on to the next point, shall we? <laughs> we got a few more left, ladies and gentlemen. We're nearly there. All right, so our next point. We like any game that gives rebirths to older characters to make them semi-relevant or useful again and obviously this is all opinionated stuff like this because Dokkan gives regular rebirths to a lot of old characters and they're still shit but we appreciate that they give a rebirth. Recently One Piece, you know, they give rebirths to the six stars, we obviously got six plus shanks and that. We're not going to be talking about that. You know our opinion. He's, he's basically shit guys. Simple as that. But we appreciate Fire Plus Luffy. It's nice of them going back, making the characters actually good, making them somewhat relevant. Like obviously, Fire Plus Luffy is absolutely goddamn ridiculous. Bleach as well, you know, they do awakenings on their characters nowadays, and most of the six stars, I think all the six stars can go up to 200 plus now. Like, even Nar well, Naruto has their own system and that, which limit breaking is difficult. Well, not to say difficult, you gotta grind and grind and grind. And it can make some of the shittier free-to-play units somewhat useful because you actually do... Well, there's actually, like, a lot of teams that actually require free-to-play units for the Limit Broken. So we do appreciate that. But it's it's nice to maybe make some of these older characters a little bit useful again because, let's be honest, like, we said beforehand, who the hell's going to be using Belmere at all? Robert said she's got that one-turn delay. Hopefully one day she'll get her fucking 4+, plus and she'll have a two-turn delay. And somebody who starts up the game might pull her, and suddenly he's got a character that can delay by two turns and maybe a cat that is times seven to shooters. <laughs> I'm kidding. But any game that you know, obviously doesn't just chug along with making something broken as the next piece of content and breaking that again with the next piece of content, something that goes, well, keeps that flow, keeps uh, you will bring out more content like that, but we'll also go back and revise our previous content and make it like useful. Like, don't get me wrong with the Dokkan reverse and stuff like that. Some of them are just trash. Like a game that actually goes back, makes these units somewhat relevant, that you might actually sneak them into a team here or there, because someone like the five plus draw hatch, you gotta give credit, some of them are quite decent, some of them are quite useful. And obviously with the six star pluses as well, Rady's become an absolute tank in gear four teams and stuff like that. And Lucci has gone from being a decent legend to OP as hell. Like he's he's, he's like in top five now, I'd say, definitely. Uh, that's Somebody can argue maybe there, Robert's probably going to start arguing maybe there anyway, but I'm just saying he's top 5 anyway. But we can appreciate games that, you know, look back, make their older content a little bit more accessible to newer players and stuff like that. You know what, it's time. I'm not, I'm not going to pussyfoot around it anymore. 
if you've got this far in the video, you get to hear our honest opinion on the Shanks rebirth. And normally, normally, a six star plus, who gives a fuck? It's just not. It's a nice little thing they're doing to improve the game. Let me tell you why this is the biggest fuck you to me ever. All right, <laughs> Shanks was my boy. He was not only the first legend I ever owned, he was the first unit that was ever on my account. He was my number one. I re-rolled for him when he first came out, which, you know, if you don't like re-rollers, guess what? I used to re-roll. That's what I did. So, anyway, Shanks is my boy. I've had that account for so long. You have no idea how long I've had that account for. Well, I mean, I've probably got a day count somewhere. It's like 700. So we actually know you, liar. You do actually know. Um... The fact of the matter is, he was one of my boys from day one. Uh, people who watched my stream back in the day will know that I used to be running shanks on islands that had he had no business running just because he was my boy. And whether it was like good or not, it was what I did. And there was a time when genuinely I didn't have many legends. And shanks beat most of the content for me. And I love that shit. I love those days. And now we've moved on and shanks has fallen out of the meta. And I still tried every single time to squeeze him into my slasher team and everyone be like why are you using shanks use a different unit god what are you doing and th there was even a point where it was just like just don't <laughs> <laughs> you, what are you doing he's not even he's not even good for like a rare recruit let alone the legends you know it's like defense thing was like completely overshadowed by time skip chopper and it just he was eclipsed and this was their moment their chance to bring him back the emperor from the East Blue, Red Hair Shanks, my boy, the man, was finally getting a chance to become the best he could be. Bear in mind, we have a Kainu right now who, in the, when faced with Shanks, was just like, Nah, you're right. You're right. Nah, it's, it's not worth the hassle. Let's end this war. Let's, let's not fuck about, you know. And Whitebeard, when he got his rebirth... While I don't use him, he is still good. Yes. While I don't use him, he is still good. Shanks, on the other hand, is barely okay. I would say, for a six star, he is right down the bottom still. As, like, bear in mind, he's just got this six star plus. I'm not even sure if it's out yet. And he's right at the bottom, still. <laughs> and it just, it kind of makes me sad. Like, why is the man with the most powerful hacky in the entire series that we've seen so far only able to attack one unit at a time for 75 times damage? Gear 4 attacks a unit for 100 times his damage. Shouldn't Shanks be stronger than Luffy? Shouldn't he be able to attack all the units for 75 times or one unit for 100 times or something? But 75 times to 1, that's kind of low. The defense removal thing, okay. But then, then to... Then to finish it all off, I know this video is going to go off way too long, but whatever. To finish it all off, he now swaps your orbs to, like, yellow orbs? Yeah, sire. All orbs are sire. Why? Why? He doesn't need that. Okay, yeah, you could say if you're using him as the leader, fantastic. Except you wouldn't. Because his captain ability isn't good enough to warrant using him as a leader. And if you were going to use him as a leader... Do you know how many different combinations we've had over the years and different characters we've had to get a full board of Psy Orbs? And now you're just going to be like, yeah, he just gets it now. It's like, cool. So if I have Strong or Shanks, Gil to Zoro serves zero purpose. And if I don't have Strong or Shanks, then I'm not going to be making a, a Psy team. So Gil to Zoro serves zero purpose. So <laughs> why is he in the game? Why did I spend all that time farming him? Oh, because fuck me, I guess. That's, that's all there is to it. And, you know... They could have done so many things with it. They could have released a new red hair pirates batch that made Shanks more useful when he got his rebirth. You know, think about, you know, Hody and his yeah. batch of fishmen pirates that make him even better than he already is. You couldn't even give Shanks that much. If you look at, if you look at the, the uh, if you look at what they could have done with him to make him maybe similar to a Kainu or similar to gear four Luffy, give him something unique about him as a character maybe like you know if he did like damage to barriers or something like that or he did damage per turn because of his insane, insane hacky maybe that defense thing that's in his special take that out 
maybe he's a bit like Blackbeard and he ignores certain barriers or he breaks the fence just by coming into the room because that's how powerful his Aki is, but no. Instead, no. we got this guy, Strong Old Shanks, Mark II, Electric Boogaloo, and, you know, much like every sequel I've watched pretty much, isn't that good? And I don't think... Uh, I don't think he's going to get the credit he deserves because, you know, like I said before I collection, any game that puts the effort in to make it so that I can use the characters that I genuinely want to use because I like them as a character, oh, I appreciate. I do appreciate that. And, you know, Naruto's tried and failed. And, you know, Bleach, I think, has done it a little bit better than some other people. And Ori Collection's doing well for now, but it's young and we don't know how far it's going to take it. But One Piece... You had your moment to rebirth Shanks and make him good. <laughs> and you fucked me. And you fucked Fuck every up, other strong... There's that one guy out there who's free to play, who's only got strong old Shanks, and this was his moment. He was sitting on all the Evolvers and the Yellow Skull, and he was waiting. <laughs> and you betrayed him. And you know what? I wouldn't be so mad if I didn't know that when Sengoku gets his rebirth, he's genuinely going to be good. Yeah. Just like Luchi is genuinely good. Just like Rayleigh is genuinely good. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Because they're probably going to release a new Shanks Legend soon enough. And it will blow them all out of the water. And I'll say, I'm happy. But I'm sad. Same as usual. Every time I play this game, I'm happy. But you know what? I'm I'm just going to go play something else, I think. And I I need to stop. If, if you've got this far in the video and you got through that rant, uh, type mango in the chat so we know that you got here because i genuinely don't believe anyone will stay through that rant uh just do you want to go to the next point or uh okay like i was just i was just in like what's the word i'm looking for in all of robert's little rant like him bumming <laughs> <laughs> see i don't have the affiliation the shanks because i only recently just pulled him i've i've fully maxed him out skill i've fully socketed him and he's shit. I used him once and I fucking died. I went straight back to gear four and that. And this six star plus Opal Air, I'm not even going to get into it. It's terrible. I'd just like to say this right now. I called it in my video a little while ago. People were saying, oh no, they're predicting this shit. I called it, by the way. So let's get back to the next point. Okay, so <laughs> we like any game that lets you to use items to customize slash improve your characters. And yeah, this, this is a nice little touch. Mainly looking at Bleach here. And I think you said Seven Deadly Seven Deadly Sins. Like yes, that. yes. Yeah. I, I really like it. It adds some another dynamic to the game. Like, obviously, I'm, I'm doing a bum bleach. It makes the characters even more OP. Yeah, like, it also creates additional events. Like, recently, well, by, about two months ago on Bleach, when they released a whole bunch of, like, new items, like the Golden Chappies, the Dog Chappies, and stuff like that. Items that generally make your characters better, generally improve the gameplay of the game. You know, make... Like, they take full bring Ichigo from being, like, oh, a, a fantastic, amazing unit to the best unit in the game. He'll do, like, ridiculous damage and just beat everything. Items just add something to it. It adds a little, like, what, what am I looking for? Another a layer to the game. Something to level up. Something to try and pull for. Like, it, it, it's something that's nice. Obviously, not all games can really implement it. Like, I don't know how One Piece would implement it. Naruto could. Like, they could have kunai knives. Like, you do more damage and stuff like that. But... Any game that tries to implement an item system is very welcome in my books and really there's not much negativity you can say about it, it just improved the gameplay and obviously it helped boost up like units really, like obviously we talked about rebirths earlier and how some of the units are fucking trash, but like on Bleach for example you could have a free chap yourself on some dead character like I don't know, pre-star Byakia but you, you can make him generally useful and generally good and he can clear a decent amount of content in the game. I like it. It adds something else, something for you to think about, something to add to a character in that. Obviously, you could have, obviously, like with One Piece and that, you've got the Sailor abilities now that have come into the game, but you could also have, like, like items that, you know, change the gameplay a little bit. You could have an item like a gas mask or something, so you don't get poisoned when you're doing Magellan Raid, or something where, uh, I don't know, you... <laughs> like, it's hard to think of something off the top of my head, but you, you get my, like, your thoughts now. You could add items into the game that generally would help with the gameplay and make the game a little bit different. And that's really all I can say. Well, I, yeah, I like that point. I think that um, adding items into One Piece would be a little bit tricky. At the moment, we already have the boats, which I know is something probably people would be thinking while they're watching this. The thing is, the boats aren't about making teams that let you play the way you want to play. 
the boats are about making the teams that you already have of a certain type even more powerful and more useful. You know, if there was like different boats where it's like this boat over here boosts your attack by 1.5 but gives you insane HP. This boat over here takes away HP but it boosts you by like two times. Then you have the choice of, oh, well, I can go for super attack or I can go for super HP. Or maybe there's one that raises like some other stats that I don't even know about yet. Maybe one boosts like recovery and HP and it could be like the Anel ship or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But Ble Bleach handles it a lot better, I think. The way they handle the items, you can you can play with a character the way you want. If you want to have a healer on your character, you can. Or if you just go for flat out beast attack, you can do that too. I like it. I like that way of handling, building around your character. But uh, this video is going on for way too long, so let's move on. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the luck mechanic. A couple of games have it. Off the top of my head, Naruto and My Hero Academia. I think those are the only ones. I believe so. That mechanic, right? Okay, so for me, and I think we're not. I'm not 100 sure about how this is implemented, but there's something in Fairy Tale to do with affection, which I think affects um, luck. I I might be wrong on that. Luck is such a cool mechanic because everything in this game is RNG. That's the that's what a gacha game is. So giving me a higher chance of getting something that I want, fuck yeah, I'm in. Let's fucking do it. On Naruto, it's grindable and shit, and that's fucking dope and to a lesser extent on uh, my hair academia as far as i know but imagine if you had it like in one piece where you farm your dofi and it's like okay this is a cool dofi but what if you farmed him and then suddenly he had like an extra luck system and you got his luck all the way up and using that unit that dofi that you use in fucking every team he gives you a better chance of getting the drops that you need or maybe more drops now i know there's kind of like a new there's a drop system in one piece with like uh buggy and uh Aruta and baccarat and all them that's cool i appreciate that but imagine if there was a luck system where even units like strong world shanks which may be only see <laughs> use in certain teams or whatever if you've got their luck really high you'd be more inclined to use them over somebody else because you've got a better chance of getting a good drop <laughs> There's nothing negative you can say There's about it. There's nothing. It's awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, let's mosey on to the next point. It, it's it's simple. You can't say anything about this. I like games. That, I like games. <laughs> I like games that tell you how many levels you're going to be getting when you feed XP boost to it. I know that sounds like a revolutionary feature that no game has, but the vast majority do. Dokkan has it. Naruto has it. I really just look at the main culprit someone one piece where it just doesn't tell you how many levels you're gonna get it's all just you gotta do the math in your head real quick or you gotta feed one at a time and i think it's just such a feature that should be standard it should be in all these games and that it should just be telling you yeah you're gonna get plus 67 levels for this or this is gonna max you out or whatever i think even what's it dokan right now they've changed it that you can literally click a button and it will use the items in your inventory to efficiently get you to the max level without wasting a lot of xp and i think that's awesome one piece is in the stone age you gotta calculate yourself get out your calculator like oh one plus two i might need to get this i gotta look up on the database how much xp does this guy need it's stupid just put it in the game end of as one piece suffered enough already i'm not gonna <laughs> Let's keep i'm going. not gonna go in on it i'm gonna move on to to the next thing um the banner system the multiple banner system Dokan is only like is the only standout I see in this. Lots of games do have multiple banners. You know, Bleach does the multiple banner. My Hero Academia does the multiple banner. Um, Naruto. Yeah, Naruto does the multiple banner. But the kings are Dokkan. There's no doubt about it. And the... <laughs> the peasants <laughs> undoubtedly <laughs> are one... Pe Fuck. Look, I really <laughs> didn't want to shit on One Piece today. I really wanted to have a nice video... Where we were honest and like, you know, these are the good things that we like about games. But a lot of time, I'm just like, you know what? This is missing. You forgot to put this in your game. Did you leave the code at home? What happened? <laughs> they can have... Why is there only one banner ever on One Piece? Why? And the only incentive to summon outside of Sugo Fest is the secret cards. 
which are kind of cool. They're kind of alright. Some of them are pretty fucking awesome, to be fair. But, in general, why do I give a shit? It's like one unit to summon for? Are you fucking kidding me? Or maybe they put them all in and there's like five units to summon for. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Look, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be straight with you. When it comes to the multiple banner system, the thing that appeals to me is once I'm done with a banner, I'm not going in on it anymore. So when I'm done with a Dokkan Fest and I'm just like, I can't can't do it. And they release something a little bit later, like a banner with like a cheeky little guaranteed SSR or something, I'm like, you know what? I'll go back in. I'll do it. I'll do some pulls. I'm, I'm up for that, you know. Back in. You're bringing out, you're bringing out like LRs and guaranteed SSRs and stuff. You know, you're like, shout out to Dokkan for that. Gets me back. In, gets me back into the summons, right? But on One Piece, it's like, oh, is it Sugo? No. Okay. And you know the amount of times, I, like when I've been streaming, someone's come in. It's like, oh, uh, when's the next Sugo Fest? I want to start on Japan. It's like. I don't know, soon, maybe, probably the end of the month, I don't, I don't really know. And it's like, oh, okay. Like, that person could just be getting into the game. If they're starting on Dokkan, they could just be re-rolling for an LR. They could just be jumping in on a Dokkan Fest, because there's almost always a Dokkan Fest on. There should always be a reason to summon. Always. Even if it's, like, for something not so good or something like, eh, okay. There should always be a reason to jump in and enjoy this game. When I come into the game, I want to enjoy it as a new player. And I don't know. I just... Cut one piece. <sighs> we, we said we weren't going to do this. And I'm so angry at myself for not doing it. But you know what? I blame you. We've only got one more point. I'm just going to bang it out. And then we're going to fucking finish this video. Because it's so long. <laughs> uh, good, enjoy editing it, that, Terry. Can I just say, enjoy editing it. So. Fuck you. The final point is a good mission system. Now, pretty much, now this is this is a wholesome point. Because basically Yay. every game has this down now. Basically every game has got the mission system going. I was a little bit worried about One Piece with the Chopper Man missions, I've got to be honest. But recently, we've been getting more Amazing. missions. They've been, you know, stepping it up. And we've been getting some proper decent goodies. And I will be the first to admit, they've improved and they've done a good job. They really have. We won't talk about our 20 Stamina Islands, which is, ba <laughs> yes, which is basically like Jumanji. <laughs> I'm not about that. We ain't talking about that. What I am talking about is the good missions, the ones that where you can get lots of goodies just for playing the game, like you normally would. Damn. They're rewarding you for playing the game. Dokkan does that well. Dokkan is doing that really well during this 200 million downloads event. Apparently, they've changed the missions completely, so it's like the missions that used to be limited and now permanent so you can get like z swords and shit like that every time it's not anyway no can legitimately good with the missions bleach legitimately good with the missions the, the missions on right now during this anniversary event are crazy um you know one piece has stepped their game up with the missions even like the fucking obscure you know what even fairy tale has a mission system even Damn. fairy tale a game that i shit on relentlessly for not doing things right, and I know we shit on One Piece too, has a mission system. And you know, it's it maybe not the best, but it's not awful. And you know, Ore Collection, even the little baby Ore Collection, has a mission system. And for me, I gotta say, that's one thing I think all the games can unite on and be, uh, you know, it's the wholesome point. The one yeah. point on this list that every single game has. Shout out to you guys. Because that wasn't always the case, but you stepped your game up. And you proved us wrong. So, shout out to you. Shout out to all the guys that make all those games, because you have proved me wrong yet again. Um, so, I think this is a good time to end the video. If, you, yes! if, you're, so, if you're somehow still here, shout out to you. I don't know how you got this far. Um, I love you. I, we love you. Um, me and Terry are gonna go to bed probably. <laughs> this video was a lot longer than I anticipated, but you know what? There were some what? points in there we had to get out, so it was definitely worth it. And you tell us, is there anything we missed in this video, if you could somehow remember everything we said? Is there anything we missed in this video, or anything we covered in this video that you would like to expand upon? Is there any point in a game that's missing, or I don't know, just... Tell me what games need what features. What feature from one game would look good on another game? And 
just leave that in the comments and I'll just I'll go in the video <laughs> yeah no thanks love you guys so, put the yeah. mango comments down below <laughs> bye 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 guys <laughs>